Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and do an ANOVA example. Okay, so I've got this scenario here. So it says, Rick, Diane, and Liz are all personal trainers who, have, who specialize in powerlifting. They decide to have a friendly competition to see if they can determine who, on average, is able to get their clients to increase their max squat weight over three months. So they randomly select individuals for their competition and start putting them through their paces. From the experiment, uh, they know that their client's improvement in lifting is normally distributed and the standard deviation between the trainers is the same. Determine who, if anyone, is better on average. Test at the alpha level of 0.05. Okay, so unlike our previous tests, like here we see now that we have three different groups. We have Rick's results, we have Diane's results, and we have Liz's results. And we need to go through and actually um, like put this data together and we want to do the comparison so before we were just comparing two things to one another but now we've got three so instead of doing like these individual pairwise comparisons on our own we can actually do these comparisons at the same time okay so a couple of things let's go through uh, a couple of baseline kind of our original questions all right so question number one uh, let's look at our uh, data this is numerical by categorical. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, uh, we want to actually talk about, uh, like, um, let's go ahead and put in our groups. Or, hold on, Let, let's first talk about our requirements. Okay, so unlike previous examples uh, where we had like either requirements where it's normally distributed or the you know we have a big enough sample size this one the requirement number one is that original original distributions this hold on sorry distributions must be normal okay so what we can so here it says that they are normally distributed so we're good so we can say that hey they must be normal there's also ways that we could check to see if these data actually are normal uh, and we can do that here in just a second okay so unlike previous examples we can't get bailed out by the central limit theorem by saying oh our sample size is big enough we actually can't do that now the original distribution must be normal All right, so that's number one and requirement uh, number two is that variances must be equal and so when we say equal what we're really saying is that the here let me, let me put this down here it's that the sample standard deviation that's the biggest must be less than or equal to less than or equal to two times the standard deviation that is the smallest and that's how we can kind of check this now also on the first one where it says that original distributions must be normal uh, there's a caveat there it can be or approximately so Alright, so we've got those requirements that we've got to check, and we can go through and check the, these in just a second. So we've got our requirements. Next thing that we're looking at is we want to know what about, um, what is our response, response variable. So response variable is like what we're actually in, and we want to know the max squat increase. Okay, and our grouping variable is going to be the trainer that's what who we're comparing each other all right so now we can talk about what is our population so this would be um, people being trained by and if we go over there we could say rick diane and Liz our parameter is the true mean increase in squat 
All right, so we've got our data. We've, we know what our requirements are. We know what the response, our grouping variable, population, and parameter. And right, now we're ready to go off on our null, or sorry, yep, our null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis with uh, ANOVA testing is as such that all means are equal. All right, so all of the the true means of the so the true mean increase in squat for people being trained by Rick as compared to Diane as compared to Liz are identical. And the alternative hypothesis is that at least one is different. So it's not that they all have to be different from one another, but at least one has to be different for us to reject the null. And if we did this, if we look over there, it says that alpha equals 0.05. All right, so it looks like that we actually need to do some checks. Now, one thing that I will say is that you'll see the data in this form sometimes. This is actually not what our commander wants. We need to put all the, all the squat increases in one column and then all of the, um, all of the names in another column. So check out what we can do. So I'm just going to take these and I'm going to separate them out. And let me just insert one. Okay, so up top here, I'm going to put trainer. And here, I'm going to put Rick. And then drop all that down. So Rick trained all of these people. That makes sense. Okay, and then if I put Diane here, Diane trained all of these people. Okay, and Liz trained all of those people oh, hold on let's delete those we don't need those all right now all we have to do is instead of having rick up here we're going to change this guy to squat and we'll do like squat weight increase something along those lines and i'm just going to delete those and now check this out i'm going to highlight my data and I can drag it to where I want it and then I can highlight the Liz's portion of the data and drag it down oops let's see give me a second and drag it down okay there we go so now I've got it in the format that our commander actually wants to see it in. So we had to do a little bit of data wrangling, not too bad, but a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna save this. And now I'm gonna come over here, I'm going to get my, our commander up and going, oh, hold on, let me restart my R Studio. Okay, and I'll just do library r commander and get my little window opened up. Okay, now what I can do is I can do data import from Excel. I'm going to name this squat. Click OK. And I just have to, wherever you save it, you got to go pick it up from and it's under my ANOVA practice open and I want to call this it's under the trainers and click OK so if we look at the view data set this is what it gives us with our Rick our Liz and our Diane awesome so let's go ahead and do some analysis on this so the first thing let's actually see if uh, give me a second let me pull up this guy again okay so let's check to see if this is like normally um, distributed or approximately so. So let's go look at a graph real quick. Let's do a histogram. We want to do the squat rate increase and check it out. We can do plot by groups. We want to plot by the trainer and we can do the x-axis. We can do like squat increase and we can do, I don't know, graph title something like trainer challenge. Okay and maybe that squat increase should be in pounds. Oh, sorry. There we go. And I'll click OK. And check this out. So 
We've got something of a normal distribution on each of these. We've got a little bit of a bell curve. Maybe this is, you know, maybe we have some issues with it, but we also have to realize that, hey, these sample sizes are actually really small. So the fact that we see just any kind of sort of bell shape is pretty good. So even though it doesn't look awesome, this would be, you know, we could probably say that we're okay by assuming that it is normally distributed. Okay, so there's one. The next one that we can check, it's let's go to statistics, let's go to summaries, and let's go to numerical summaries. Let's do the squat rate increase again, summarized by groups, and we will just click the mean and the standard deviation, and we'll click OK. So we come down and we look at our standard deviations and check it out. Yeah, none of those standard deviations are uh, more than two times of any of the others. So we're good for this assumption that their standard deviations are in fact the same. Okay, let's see if we've got any other things we've got to check. And so we did our checks. Uh, we know what our, we've got our null hypothesis, we got our alpha. Hey, we are ready to do our ANOVA test. So our ANOVA test is actually really easy. All we got to do is go to statistics. We can go to means. And then look, we can do a one-way ANOVA. Go ahead and click on that. Now we've got some options. We need to know what our grouping variable is, and we've got to know what our response variable is. Hey, we already figured this out. Grouping variable is trainer, okay? And the response variable was the max squat increase. So we could do this squat weight increase, and we want to click on this, the pairwise comparison of means. Okay, and we can click OK. Okay, so we're going to come down and check to see what type of results that we have. Okay, so the ANOVA test had basically kicked out a ton of information for us, so let's kind of go through it step by step. So this is what is known, oops, sorry. This is what is known as the ANOVA table. Let me show it to you in our flowchart real quick. So our flowchart will actually take us to an ANOVA table. Let's blow it up and let's start off at the top. So remember, the first question always is, what am I testing? Well, guess what? We are now testing numerical by categorical. So we can follow this red line, and the question is, is it normal? So it has to be yes or approximately so uh, to get over here. If not, we are stuck. Um, but now it asks if the standard deviations are equal. So it either says yes, it says so, or no, but the sample size, the largest sample um, standard deviation is less than or equal to two times the small standard standard deviation, and we get this analysis of variance table. Now you might be getting a little overwhelmed and thinking, wow, that's a lot of stuff that I've got to cover, but really it's not because I'm not going to make you do this by, by hand. But So the, the ultimate reason why we do the table is so that we can get this F statistic. Just like how we were before worried about getting a T score or a Z score, now we're interested in this F score because it's going to help us get a P value so we can determine how weird of a result do we actually have. Okay, so enough of that, uh, and we come in here and see, hey, we've got these degrees of freedom. It, anyways, it ultimately lands us to this F value, and we get this P value, and check it out, our P value is really big. All right, so let's look at some of these other things. So it also kicks us out the summaries of everything. That's good. And we scroll on down, and we see that, okay, so the next one is the simultaneous tests and we're using a two key test. Uh, you really don't need to know that, but basically it compares these differences. So it says we're going to compare Liz to Diane, Rick to Diane, and Rick to Liz. Okay, and we get the p-values of those various um, comparisons. And look, none of those are significant either. And so when we finally go and look at, we can do our simultaneous confidence intervals. They're done at the 95 family-wise confidence level. And we see that we get these following confidence levels for the comparisons between our various groups. Okay, so now here's the question. The question is, is like, okay, are any of these different? Were we able to reject the null hypothesis? Well, let's pull up our little table again. Okay, so we've got a p-value. Let's figure out what our p-value actually is again. And our p-value up here was 0.737. So we can say 0 0.737. And so if that's our p-value, we would fail to reject 
the null. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that none of these comparisons were seen to be significantly different from one another. So what you know, you can kind of make the conclusion that it doesn't matter which trainer you go with, they're all going to basically help you increase your squat max um, the same. So let's write a conclusion about this with um, with insignificant results. So we would say that uh, we collected insufficient evidence at the alpha level of 0 0.05 to reject the claim that the true sorry true mean squat weight increase is the same for all of the trainers and then so we can basically make this conclusion that um, like our data um, suggests that it does not matter who you train with. Because like ultimately that, that's the question. The question is like, you know, does it matter if you go with Liz, Rick, or Diane to increase your squat max? And our data suggests that it really doesn't matter. We weren't able to show any differences there. Uh, and then we'll do another example here in just a bit where we actually do have significant results so that we can go through that as well. So anyhow, that's how we do our basic ANOVA and good luck.